Okay, now let's talk a little bit about neurotransmitter synthesis and the steps in the release and eventual metabolism. We'll also talk about a few drugs which either interfere or enhance these various steps. Notice that we're going to talk about this in two neuron types, cholinergic neurons, which are simply those neurons which release acetylcholine, and noradrenergic neurons, which are those that release norepinephrine. And let's begin with the synthesis of acetylcholine. The first step is simply taking up the precursor substance, which is known as choline. This is transported into the cell very close to the nerve terminal. Choline is then combined with acetyl-CoA by the enzyme known as choline acetyltransferase. This results in the acetylcholine neurotransmitter, which is then packaged into vesicles and prepared for release. When an action potential travels down the axon and reaches the terminal, this results in depolarization of the membrane and causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open and allow calcium to enter into the nerve terminal. This in turn triggers the fusion of acetylcholine-containing vesicles with the cell membrane, which results in the release of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. Acetylcholine, of course, can then bind to muscarinic or nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, which are found on the postsynaptic cell. Now, of course, the postsynaptic cell could be a neuron, or it can be a target tissue, like those of the sweat glands. In either case, the binding of acetylcholine triggers the receptor and results in its activation. Acetylcholine is rendered inactive by the enzyme known as acetylcholinesterase, here abbreviated ACHE. This splits acetylcholine into its constituent parts, acetate and choline, the latter of which can be retaken up by the neuron in order to regenerate acetylcholine once again. Now that we've talked about that general process, let's talk about some of the drugs that inhibit these steps. Starting from the top, hemicholinium prevents the synthesis of acetylcholine by inhibiting the transport of choline into the cell. The samicol, on the other hand, prevents the loading of acetylcholine into vesicles. The bacterial toxin botulinum prevents the release of acetylcholine by inhibiting a complex of proteins which are known as snares. Snares look something like this and in effect twist together and bring the vesicle very close to the terminal membrane resulting in the fusion and release of acetylcholine. And this whole process of course is triggered by the influx of calcium. Botulinum actually cleaves and inhibits a particular protein in this complex, which is known as synaptobrevin. Okay, now that we've talked about cholinergic neurons, let's move on to a discussion about noradrenergic neurons. The precursor of norepinephrine is tyrosine. Tyrosine is actually the precursor of all catecholamines, and you can review these synthetic pathways in depth in the biochemistry chapter of the book. Much like choline, tyrosine needs to be transported into the nerve terminal. Once inside, tyrosine can be converted to dopa, and dopa can then be converted into dopamine. Dopamine is then loaded into vesicles, where it can be converted into norepinephrine. Again, the propagation of an action potential into the nerve terminal results in the influx of calcium, which then triggers the fusion of vesicles with the terminal cell membrane, resulting in the release of norepinephrine. Norepinephrine can then bind to its respective receptors, here shown as the alpha or beta adrenergic receptors, which of course include the alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, or beta-2 receptor types. And of course, once bound, these receptors can trigger an intracellular pathway. Okay, now let's talk about a few of the drugs that interfere with these steps. The first is metyrosine. Metyrosine inhibits the conversion of tyrosine into dopa. Originally, it was intended to be used as an antihypertensive, but because this step is required for the synthesis of all catecholamines, metyrosine had many, many side effects and is no longer used. Reserpine is just like vesamicol in that it inhibits the loading of dopamine into vesicles. And finally, guanethidine essentially acts in the same place as the botulinum toxin. It inhibits the fusion of vesicles with the terminal membrane. Notice that once norepinephrine 
enters the synaptic cleft, there is no enzyme which plays a role analogous to the acetylcholinesterase. Instead, norepinephrine is removed from the synaptic cleft by reuptake, diffusion, and metabolism. Metabolism occurs by the monoamine oxidase enzyme, but this is not found in the synaptic cleft. It's actually found within the neuron which released norepinephrine itself. So you can see that norepinephrine is regulated slightly differently than acetylcholine. There are a number of drugs which enhance the effects of norepinephrine by making it more available in the synaptic cleft. Amphetamines, for example, enhance the release of norepinephrine into the synaptic cleft. Along with cocaine in the tricyclic antidepressants, amphetamine can also inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine, again making it more available in the cleft. There is one other way that norepinephrine is regulated, and that's by negative feedback which is depicted on the next slide. When norepinephrine is released, it actually begins to bind the alpha-2 adrenergic receptor. Remember that this receptor activates the GI protein class, which in turn decreases the level of cyclic AMP available within the cell. Ultimately, these effects result in the reduced release of norepinephrine thus representing another means of regulating levels of norepinephrine. On this slide, it's also worthwhile pointing out that the same effect can be achieved when acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic M2 receptor. Remember from our mnemonic MAD2s that the M2 receptor also mediates its effects via the GI protein. So in summary, there are four ways to regulate or remove norepinephrine. The first is diffusion, the second is metabolism, and this occurs mostly by the enzyme monoamine oxidase, the third is reuptake, and the fourth is negative feedback.